Hi, this is Justin from Sonic Scoop coming at you from Joel Lambert Mastering. Today, I want to talk to you about two secrets around parallel compression that can help dramatically improve your results. Chances are, if you're already checking something out in Sonic Scoop, you already know what parallel compression is. Taking one track and then duplicating that track or uh, routing it so that you have a copy of that track that you're applying really heavy compression to, and then folding that compressed track in underneath your uncompressed track. But there are two things that you may or may not be doing with your parallel compressed tracks, and if you're not doing them, it defeats the whole purpose of parallel compression. Those two things are, one, using a really fast attack time, and two, using a lot of bass and treble boost. And I mean really fast, and I mean a lot of boost. Don't be shy. Uh, now, there's a very particular reason for this. If you don't do this, you're kind of defeating the purpose of parallel compression. You're kind of sidestepping the main benefits. And the main benefits of parallel compression, especially on one of the most popular applications like a drum bus, is to make sure that you're getting a lot of extra impact, a lot of extra energy, a lot of extra kind of bombast and power, uh, but without taking up too much extra space in the mix. If you do these two things, you'll establish a nice floor and a nice ceiling to your sound, and you're going to put in a kind of low-end consistent floor on, say, your kick drum and a uh, consistent amount of kind of air and shine and sparkle on top of things without it ever getting kind of too edgy, too harsh, too boomy, without taking up too much space. And you do this by using really fast attack time and by doing significant boosts in the lows and highs. Think about it this way. You're using a fast, fast attack time so that you can chop off all the transients. This way you have a super consistent kick drum and super consistent cymbal crashes. So on this parallel compressed track, you're trying to get rid of the dynamics so every kick hit that comes in is steady, providing you with a kind of real floor. And then to make things even better, you want to put a big boost on the low end so that you have a really consistent full bodied floor and you can just tuck in a little bit of this floor underneath. You don't need much at all once you've done some significant low end boost and you make sure that the attacks of each hit are really consistent. And the same thing happens with your cymbals. You want to make sure that you can add kind of sparkle and shine without a lot of harsh edge and a kind of sibilant sound coming from these cymbals. So you want to kind of really tame this attack, boost the high end so it has a decent amount of kind of glitter and shine, and then you're bringing these things up very subtly under your uncompressed track. It's not going to take up much energy in the mix at all, but it'll give you some real kind of power and bombast while still retaining the kind of natural, organic, dynamic, transient feel of the main track, which is going to be dominant. And the ratio here, it's not like one to one. It's not even like two to one. I mean, it is just a little bit of this compressed track that you need to add in to really uh, get those extra results as long as you're using super fast uh, attack time and healthy bass and treble boosts. If you don't do this, you sidestep the whole point of parallel compression. If you're setting a really slow attack time, you're actually going to accentuate the transients. You're going to let even more transient information get through. You're not really going to have any consistency on the initial attack portion of each hit. Uh, if anything, you're going to be kind of almost accentuating some of the dynamics that are already there on the initial hits. So if you want your hits to be consistent, you want a fast attack time. If you want a, a nice stable floor and a nice clean ceiling, uh, you want to make sure that you're doing significant boosts to the low end and the high end. If you do those two things with parallel compression, you're going to get a lot of great results. If you don't and you use a slow attack time, uh, if you keep a more mid-rangey sound, uh, you're not really 
adding anything new or interesting or accentuating anything uh, that's uh, not there enough already. Your drum kit, chances are, already has plenty of mid-range. Uh, your uh, natural drum performance, chances are, already has plenty of transient. You can keep your natural, organic, dynamic feel while uh, adding some power and consistency, nice floor, and nice ceiling. And you can do that without having to overboost your kick drum, overboost your cymbals, which is something I get uh, uh, sometimes uh, in the mastering studio. Mixes where the kick drum is boosted a little bit too much for its own good, the cymbals are boosted a little too much for their own good. If you want that kind of power and impact and consistency out of your drum kit, you could get that by doing parallel compression, really fast attack, and a good healthy boost on the lows and highs, folding in just a little bit of that. Well, I hope you found this quick tip helpful. This has been Justin Coletti for Sonic Scoop at Joe Lambert Mastering. And remember, subscribe here on YouTube. Go to sonicscoop.com, subscribe to the newsletter there. You'll get producer engineer interviews, studio tours, gear reviews, tips and tutorials, uh, deals, giveaways on audio gear, plus information about uh, new products we have coming out, new seminars that will really help you kind of next level your audio skills and take your audio game from where it is now to where you want it to be. Thanks again for hanging out with me on the Sonic Scoop video blog. This has been Justin Coletti for uh, Sonic Scoop. See you next time.